Yeah, guys, so we're going to be watching The King of Kong, Fistful of Quarters in all of its glory. We get to see Billy Mitchell versus Steve Wiebe. We're going to try and every once in a while just pause it to explain things, especially from the standpoint that we have now compared to when this movie was made. I watched this, I think it was like 2010. And okay. a friend of mine said, oh, you got to watch this documentary because 2010 like nowadays speed running is this big thing mm -hmm. but back in 2010 it was like kind of before speed running blew up speed running kind of blew up with twitch and all that 2012 really started growing back then sort of high school gaming was still uh, super underground and really niche and so was speed running so speed running was still by this stage a really weird thing and when we were watching it it was so bizarre seeing something like speedrunning actually yeah. in a documentary because i was like a video game champion myself like back in uh, 2002 it was just cool seeing a video game champion sort of getting attention and having this whole big thing about it it was just so hilarious but i think you get more out of it being mm -hmm. a like a speedrunner or a, a competitive game or whatever than sort of a casual person you know it's funny what's up I, I had this comment on my on my donkey kong video as well people are like why is this because I mentioned that I thought sort of this retro high score gaming was kind of weird. And people are like, why Why is a speedrunner saying that, <laughs> you know, this high score competitive gaming is weird? But there's a spectrum, you know, like even for me, and I'm kind of weird. When I first, when I very first watched this documentary, I saw these people as weird. Competitive gaming, when you want to attach your name to a world record, when you want your name written into history, you have to pay the price. I could relate to that. Even what he said about, there's, there's like a fun type of gaming and then there's a competitive type of gaming. I mean, that's definitely true, right? You know, that little section isn't, isn't what he just said there isn't crazy. I mean, he says a lot of crazy stuff, but um, he's definitely right when he's like the fun casual gaming and that. But if you want to take it seriously, it's like a completely different thing. Like I said, when I first watched this back in 2010, I was like totally on board with this, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's true. Like, it's, it's interesting hearing these people like talk about competitive gaming, which is so, it was so niche at the time. I wanted the glory, I wanted the fame, I wanted the pretty girls coming up and say, Hi, I see that you're good at centipede. Somebody draw an analogy for me. That never happened. <laughs> the top American pilot, you don't know his name, do you? Nobody does. But it's Eddie Rickenbacker. Shot down 26 enemy planes. Dude, he has the all Germanes, these fucking the Red stories. Like, oh, dude. He, he, it's like... He memorized... Like, sir, this is a Wendy's? <laughs> if you watch a lot of Billy Mitchell footage, it's like the same stories over and over and over and over again. And he says yeah. exactly the same thing over and over and over and over again. He has them all rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, I know. And he's like, I'm just gonna, you know. And they're all about how awesome he is. What what place is he on the leaderboard right now? <laughs> last last pause for a second, but like he's like, there's a difference between people. There's like 23 people better than him. <laughs> Only the diehards who, for some reason. <laughs> You know, one thing that I really dead. respect is the energy and the effort and all that that went into putting up all this stuff. I mean, imagine if Twin Galaxies was actually legit. There was no bullshit uh, lies. They, they may uh, have had I mean, something be, here. It's awesome. Yeah, well, they did have something, evidently. And it seemed like people tried to cash out on it. They, well, yeah, individuals like Billy Mitchell wanted to lie and personally profit and all that kind of stuff. But if that was not there and it was just it was just legitimately praising and celebrating actual scores and actually the best gamers, it's awesome, you know? It's awesome. Well at that time he was the world record. Dude, I bet I bet me and Billy Mitchell, this Billy Mitchell would have like had a nice time sharing a very <laughs> a, a loaded blunt. Like I'm I'm sure we would have had a spirited conversation. I'm sure I'm sure the old me or the no, so the old Billy Mitchell and the current me we would have been homies. I went in the arcade and sat down with Donkey Kong and I beat him to a pulp. <laughs> he basically walked away with his head down and humbled and that brought him to the truth and from there we worked together. Why can't you do that? Why can't you do that? There hasn't been anybody who's played even close. When Billy Mitchell walks into an arcade, what the hell? You know, okay, so pause it. He said there's no one else who would have even come close. By this by this point in time, Steve Weeby had already gotten over a million points. Steve Weeby was way, way better player than Billy Mitchell. Steve Weeby was totally owned by Twin Galaxies, like disqualifying all of his time uh, all of his scores yeah. for various reasons and everything. But it's just crazy that even with Steve Weeby being the better player, Billy Mitchell's talking about how how far he is ahead of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Weeby got over a million points in two thousand three. Which would have been a couple of years before uh, these kind of shoots. 
If you could hack into the machine and program it to play itself, you couldn't even program it that well. How many free bottles of hot sauce do you have to get to do to say that? The all-around most seasoned person in the hot sauce chicken wing industry? Yeah, for sure, me. Yeah, by the way, guys, this, this movie also doubles over as a uh, Billy Mitchell hot sauce advertisement, uh, be warned. Get through every board, getting every dot, every oh, energizer, he does have a every ghost line. that's applicable. He's, he's in here a couple times. That's the player of the century award. <laughs> I saw what the score was. It was held by Billy Mitchell. And it was like 800 and... Yeah, so see, see the dates here? You got like 2001, 2004 and all that. Uh, so in 2000, Tim Serby got like beat this record. He got like 879,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, this this doesn't even talk about Steve Wiebe, who in 2002 got a new world record. And then in 2003, like he got over a million points. Like this, all this stuff is wrong, which is it's part of the lawsuit, the Twin Galaxies versus Billy Mitchell lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I think that the, but Twin Galaxies kind of was putting blame on the producers of the King of Kong and saying that they, you know, for artistic reasons or no, whatever. No, I, I definitely caught that as like, well. They're trying to make him like the, the villain. Yeah, but the, but the reality is, from what we've heard from the producers, Twin Galaxies was spinning this story about how Tim Serby's score wasn't even verified and... And all this stuff. So the reality is more likely that Twin Galaxies, i.e. Walter Day and Billy Mitchell, were lying about what was actually happening. They're lying about what scores were actually achieved to make Billy Mitchell on top. And then the producers just went with it. Narratively, this whole Billy Mitchell versus Steve Weaver with Billy Mitchell on top was probably pushed by Twin Galaxies. The producers obviously didn't like Billy Mitchell as well. You know, you can tell there's, there's it's more apparent later on, the producers didn't like Billy Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And they tried, they wanted to make that clear in how they edited the whole thing. It has my high score saved on there from last year. I don't think you're allowed to save your high scores because that requires like this modification. Because normally when you turn off the machine on and off, um, it just resets the high score. It doesn't even save. Really? Yeah. So in order to have, it's called a, sa a high score save kit and it's a modification. So I think uh, official rules is you're not even allowed to have that. He was about, he was a basketball. Wait, <laughs> I need to go back and hear that. He was a basketball. <laughs> his talent is in his hands. He pitched. He was a basketball. He's a phenomenal drawer. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of him, <laughs> but he's very. Can I just say one thing that I have to say? Go for it. Is that um I mentioned this uh, Tim Serby guy who got who beat the world record in two thousand. I don't think he's a likable character, and and because he's not that likable as a character, I in the past I was like you know what you know well it's just you know that's what sometimes documentaries do to make themselves more interesting is they kind of bend the truth. I mean this is true for many documentaries. I mean if you think that most documentaries actually portray the actual truth, then you're naive to how documentaries are. So I was like, you know what, narratively they made that decision, that's fine. But then, you know, uh the more I thought about it and realized, man, imagine that you spent all this time getting a world record and then this document that completely ignored what you did, didn't even mention it, act like it never happened and then seeing that then go on being like as popular as it was and then seeing the the people that started in the documentary getting all the success and going around to conventions and becoming like famous in the gaming sphere that would fucking hurt that would suck so like, bad oh my god i could have sold like, hot sauce you know like it... <laughs> <laughs> i know just having it acknowledged acknowledge acknowledge in some way Mm -hmm. Would have been okay. It, it would. It would seriously. It would seriously hurt, man. Yeah, and it's something that you didn't even, didn't even want to be recognized for. Maybe you kind of just did it for you. But now that everyone's getting like all of this, it's like kind of sucks to be left out uh, when you were uh, heavily invested in something like that. And not many people were, and you were, you know, one of if not the best. I was having a game in my life. I was. I think I got oh. six hundred thousand. <laughs> this one. Uh, Derek, <laughs> you stop it. <laughs> Oh man, I, I'm just thinking about what I would do. What I yeah, would do in this as situation. a as a <laughs> since as you're now a father, I would probably hate my life, but I would stop playing. Yeah, I would stop. I would stop playing, and I would absolutely be pissed off. You, I mean, <laughs> dude, your your <laughs> runs are like fifty like fifty seconds long, and this dude's in it for like hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's life. Yep, that's life. It's all on because he had, he was like he was at six hundred thousand points, but he still had like half an hour to go. Walter opened the door to truly 
I was going to say international, but at the very least, national competitive gaming. We just happened to call it Twin Galaxies. That? The name mm -hmm. burst into yeah. Another one of the Twin Galaxies lies is that they created esports and they created like competitive video gaming and all that kind of stuff, which is complete bullshit. There were plenty of video game tournaments before this. The, the one that's hard to dispute is being the only, like, how can you even say that if it's just like straight? It's just not true. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand that compulsion to just make everything like the greatest, the best, the first. Like, why does that have to be a thing? I mean, what you're already doing is a good thing. Why? Why do you have to take it to the next level? It's just, uh, it's just a huge shame. He's got the full get up. Like, he's. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. He's really committed to that um, to that costume. Dude, like sometimes like Walter comes off like somewhat endearing. Like it's it's interesting yes. to know what's going on in his head. Like it'd be very interesting to know. Twin Galaxy survives because people like Walter, people like Robert Mirzak, people like Dude, Nate, Robert, who... like he anyone that's contacted him and just wants to know like anything. He will just send you paragraphs on paragraphs. Like he's such a help. He'll get on the phone with you. Such a helpful dude. Like he's just he's really in it for the sport. Like, I love Robert. Yeah, I know. I'm I saying. really love Robert. There's, I I saw this comment uh, on the YouTube video, which sort of but it was just a really great comment. It's like I hope to get the level of contentment and like confidence that Robert has, because mm -hmm. like he, the things that he's interested in is is really so niche and outlandish. But he's just so confident in it. And he's so happy with himself and just so, yeah. you know, he, he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. And he's just, he's just uh, chilling it's out, just amazing. watching uh, records and just verifying them. And that's just what he likes to do. And that's his hobby. It's, and yeah. he's not afraid to, or like, he's not opposed to like sharing it with people. And that's really valuable. By the way, the, the, the irony the about that whole thing is that Billy Mitchell was a joint owner of Twin Galaxies. Yeah. I, I had no idea. It's interesting if you if you go back to that little graph, it's like he's intentionally trying to obscure the fact that he's at the top. Wait, so somebody asked real quick. So serious question, not to justify anything that guy does, but was he originally a partner or whatnot, or did he invest later and become one? It's a complicated thing, and I don't even remember all the like how it's all changed hands over the years because it's like changed hands so much. He was owner of Twin Galaxies, I think, as early as the early 80s. And basically, there's this habit, a long history of selling Twin Galaxies and then trying to claw it back. And they've done this multiple times. He made the mistake of selling it to Jace Hall at the end because he actually has money and power and he's not a pushover. I have no idea what they were thinking. I think that they believe that Jace doesn't have any money or anything like that to defend himself. Summoning Salt says, according to Robert Merzak, at one point... Walter Day entered one of Billy's scores into the database in front of the cameras, so they had him typing the site password in their footage. He goes, you're the first lady of Donkey Kong. I'm like, oh my god. Stop it. No, it was this silly video game. <laughs> the with Donkey Kong is I have the world record. OK, I didn't know it was a world record. <laughs> it's for Donkey Kong, is it? Oh, OK, now he's got street cred. Billy's got a lot of things up his sleeve. <laughs> He likes to keep quiet in, in situations like that. So you know, that sounds I mean, sus. This guy here now, is like he's, he's a felon in prison and he's only included in the documentary to talk up Billy Mitchell. <laughs> it's like it's a bizarre thing. I, I don't this guy doesn't even get a name credit as far as I'm aware. They, don't, they never say who he is. They never say how, why he's relevant or, or anything. It's just this random guy in prison who's saying about how awesome Billy Mitchell is. The worst thing that could happen would be to give somebody the credibility of a score that doesn't deserve it. That'd be bad. But even far worse than that would be to d deny somebody the credibility when they deserved it. That's also bad. To find out at, at an ultra elite level whether or not a score is good, sometimes we have no choice but to call in the pros. Bri Brian Koo. All right, how how often do they really do that? Like, if if it wasn't Steve Weeby, like, were they were they really doing this that often? Going to people's garages and checking? I think it was because he, he got attention, and you saw like Steve Weeby was on TV, and he had like news articles or whatever. And I think they didn't like that. Allegedly, I'm saying Billy Mitchell didn't like that Steve Weeby was getting all this attention. And he's mm -hmm. not part of that crew. So they wanted to just make his life difficult.
I mean, I'm the homeowner, it's my house, I'm the wife of the Donkey Kong guy. They should have respected my wishes and left my mom alone. <laughs> and not I'm the wife of the Donkey Kong guy. They took apart his board is a completely le legitimate board. Roy's taint on it is too strong. Well, he's threatened Bill Mitchell physically. Uh, in fact, he, he has threatened Bill Mitchell's life. No, I did not. I did not. I did not. He threatened his own life. <laughs> to make it look like me. They don't like the fact that Pete, that I he's trying to compete and win. Hurt me. We couldn't accept. They just, they, a there's nothing actually board, so, so speak. wrong so in principle about what's going on. They just don't like the fact that people want to beat Billy Mitchell's score. That's it. That's yeah. their problem. It's like they so want Billy Mitchell to be on top that anyone who dares try to beat Billy Mitchell is evil. And how dare you? How dare you try to? actually win yourself and, and knock down Billy Mitchell is basically all they're saying. I would encourage Steve just to leave that board behind, leave Roy behind, and only play on other Donkey Kong machines, like the one at Fun Spot, for example. So, like, they don't want him to have the record unless he's flying across the country to achieve it, right? Yeah, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's not like they had that belief from the get-go. It's just like, oh, damn, the record got beaten. Let's, what, what other requirements can we throw in here to take down that score and make it more difficult? That's all it is. Like, I, I, I remember putting in my video the other angle shot of this interview. That just, like, gave me a wave of nostalgia of my own content, like, back when this shit all started. She's at the top of the list. <laughs> Surprise! Oh and at the ripe age of... 80, she's gonna go to Fun Spot and she's gonna set a world record on Qbert. Okay. That's the challenge. All right. Is it agreed? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's completely contrived in an attempt to make him more likable, but I, it just doesn't work. And even the way he presents it is like- It worked on some people probably. You know, the, the my favorites, the people that I want to help. Why is there the favoritism at all if, if he's supposed to be an advocate for gaming in general? I don't know, but he gave this um, very nice old lady uh, what is a Qbert machine. So I like him. <laughs> hey Walter, you did it, man. Good to see you. I'm really, I'm really glad you came. Yeah. I don't want to divide your attention too much. Is Roy coming? No. Walter well, today is like. Oh, he seems nice. And he's like saying hello and everything. But really, it's an interrogation about Roy. Like, why are you jumping straight into this Roy stuff? You just like, you're just saying hello to Steve Weeby. Why are you jumping in, like, asking mm -hmm. him about Roy? Walter and Billy always come off as super nice, uh, super genuine guys to pretty much anyone's face. I don't think I've heard it, like people having bad face to face interactions with them um, at like conventions or anything like that. It's more of like the behind the doors type stuff. Well, Billy Mitchell's a champion. I guess that makes me the prodigy. So we've got the prodigy against the newcomer. You can really make a comparison between an athletic event um, and this because this is, you know, this is four days of, you know, really of alertness and paying attention and, uh, uh, you know, n not as hard as doing a decathlon or a triathlon, but still very, very hard. everything is just talking themselves up and like one of the one of the things i hate the most is talking about myself as far as like my accomplishments and in my videos i try to not do that like half the half my viewers don't even know that i speed run yeah I, I think that's always so funny when uh people find out that you or somebody in salt like speed run and you're both like really good at it and they just have no idea they just think you make these speed running videos just without like any uh insight into it, I guess. I mean, not that that, that doing it gives you the insight, but it, it does. It does give you like genuinely good perspective. Uh, so we, we may have an exciting moment here, uh, or, uh, you know, the, the pressure may get to him. One of those random elements might happen. He's talking uh, like he's within earshot. <laughs> yeah, he might screw up, but oh, who knows what <laughs> happens. This is the highest Donkey Kong score done in public. Do you think Walter has ever said the in public part uh, after any Billy's? <laughs> I don't know why he said in public in general, because I think this would have been the highest score ever. The process is stands for itself. He did it in front of all of us. But this See, the funny thing is they, they didn't know that the tape was coming. And the, well, everything that they're saying now is ironic <laughs> because of what happens the next day. Yeah, <sighs> it hurts. Oh, yes! Say hi to Todd. Actually, would you believe he's in the middle of a, of a ladybug game? I don't think we'd want to interrupt. They, um, you know, were kind of diffusing what I was going for. 
you know, and, and hyping up Billy's, you know, videotape. One million forty-seven thousand two hundred points. I was gonna say he probably had this score for a long time. This score of one million forty-seven thousand was a hundred thousand points more than a record that Steve Wiebe got, because Steve Wiebe at some time in two thousand three got a. 947,000 score. Billy Mitchell liked to sort of beat scores by a certain amount. So he'd either beat it by a thousand or, or whatever, you know, it's kind of his thing. This score, 1,047 is a weird number. And I was like, but it's weird because in this documentary, you don't know about the 947,000 that Weeby got, which was eventually disqualified or whatever. But probably what happened is Mitchell made the tape and he might've made several tapes for all we know. And just had them sitting around. I'll explain what the actual state of the rankings when we see the rankings. Mm -hmm. But he probably had this tape sitting mm -hmm. around for a while and then just sort of sent it off after Weeby got his score live. There's no way he could have prepped it by the time he knew that Steve was going to be able to beat the score. Like, it's just not realistic to make, like, well, a task. Hi, Billy. <laughs> Pretty good. It's all been wonderful. <laughs> Billy's probably the closest person see, to being fake. a Jedi of any of the He's players. He's so excited. He He's so yeah. giddy. Billy! Like, hi, Billy. He's like Billy's biggest fan or something. Dude, he well, literally just went ooh woo. Like, in the freaking. Um. <laughs> With humor is. Can I see some of Billy's tape? What? Did Billy mind if I saw it? Uh, no, 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 I no, can't no, show no. you the tape. Oh, it was a he didn't one, want me to. A one oh, play, no. a one play on Billy. Right. Steve. Yeah, no, he, he had to sit there and play, and he wasn't allowed to watch it. Everyone else was allowed to, but uh, he wasn't allowed to view the strats that Billy was using. Yeah, like uh, somebody in Salt said in the chat, like it's a very, very good thing that this doesn't exist in speedrunning today. This is so destructive to the hobby and what the ultimate goal is. Building up these characters, they're also just like harming other people. It, it, it's not quite like that, but the, they're de definitely like, in, it's definitely an injustice towards these people. The tape jump from score to score? How, how, how did that happen? So here's what happened. The score wasn't actually, it didn't end up being accepted onto the leaderboard because of that copy tape, because that, that copy is really bad. Oh. Um, so eventually, Billy Mitchell sent the master tape to Robert. Robert verified using the master tape, okay, which I okay. think might have been in like 2006. So like a year later. Okay. A year later, it was actually verified using the master tape. And how much, Billy? Maybe okay, pause it there. 200. You've got 985. That was Steve Wiebe. He did that like yesterday. You've got this 933,000, which was done by Billy Mitchell. That was uh, in 2004. That was done live. It's actually the score that Donkey Kong Forum has listed for Billy Mitchell. So Donkey Kong Forum is like the authority on Donkey Kong high scores. Hmm. They removed all of his MAME scores and they left this particular 933,000 on there because it was legit. The 933,000 was only the world record because all of Steve Wiebe's scores that he did at home was, was were disqualified. He actually had a 947,000 as well, which was disqualified as well. Billy Mitchell had this 1,047,000 tape that he wanted to beat the 947,000 oh, yeah. score with, right? Yeah. And and he made that when the night when the nine hundred forty seven thousand score was still kind of being disputed because the dispute process for the nine hundred forty seven thousand that Steve Weeby got lasted like a year. It's crazy to take a year. I don't know. I think all the players kind of universally didn't want to accept it, hmm. but it was still on the ranks. So um, Mitchell made this one million forty seven thousand to beat that. But I think because he got this nine hundred thirty three thousand and the nine hundred forty seven thousand was disqualified, Billy Mitchell ended up having the world record. And because Billy Mitchell ended up having the world record officially, he didn't need to then submit his one million forty seven because he would just be beating his own world record. And then when Steve Wiebe beat it in public, he then just sent the tape that yep. he made to beat Steve Wiebe's score. So that's why he had the tape and didn't submit it earlier. Yeah, and he had a whole ass year to prepare it. Then you got Tim Tim Serby score there, the eight hundred seventy nine thousand. And this ranking here is the actual official one, and it's completely different to the one they show on the actual on the in post production on the documentary. Oh, you're right. Yeah. There's no Tim Jackson. There's no Jeffrey Brand because they beat Brian Koo. It's just, it's just Brian. the Brian. It's just that Brian guy. <laughs> Happiness of this, so that it can go on and continue to benefit people. Oh, Todd. It's in such a place that Todd's spotting in the background. <laughs> and everything we do is being true and honest, and so that's why they're going with us as the official scorekeepers and providers of electronic gaming content for their upcoming books. It's become very complicated. Yeah, pause so it. Someone like Wolf this guy is the same guy that 
reinstated Mitchell's scores. Oh my gosh, you're right. <gasps> and and his relationship with Twin Galaxies goes back for years and years. What the hell? You want your name in the Guinness Book of World Records and then the Twin Galaxies International Scoreboard? You have to earn it. I have to earn it. There's a lot of scores I've gotten. And when the time comes and the pressure's that hard, I'll have to do it in a public forum, as I always have. In the public the forum, he right. never really competed that well. In my video about the, the Kong off, right? Mm -hmm. He never performed well <clears throat> against the best Donkey Kong players. In, in his videos now, he has this uh, belt where he won the Australian Kong off. So he basically had to travel halfway around the world to avoid the top players to win a Donkey Kong tournament. And then he takes that belt that he won and like puts it up, you know, oh, look how great I am because I won this Donkey Kong tournament. If you look at his, um, like his Guinness World Record statement video, he's got the, the Australia Kong off belt <laughs> next to him, along with his Ricky hot sauce and some book that he's trying to sell. When he actually played in live tournaments, he, his play style wasn't like the play style on the tapes. Hmm, really? And uh, the playstyle in his records was very risky. Billy Mitchell at the time was like relatively good at Donkey Kong, not the best, but and he's nowhere near the best now. But back then there was far less competition, mm -hmm. and there's only a few people playing Donkey Kong. Now, I'm not a foremost, you know, foremost expert on Donkey Kong, but apparently the 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 tape showed risky play, like that you would never play like that in an actual run because over two hours, two and a half hours, if you if you use risky strategies, you'll die. You know, it's just not a good idea. Yeah. And the only reason you would need to use risky strategies if you're using save states is if you're not a very good player. The best players have a way of playing safely, but still racking up heaps of points. They don't need to play risky. But if you're not very good, in order to match that, you can't actually use skill. So you have to use risk. That The tapes weren't, didn't match his on like actual real life play. So it's probably a lesser uh, skilled player doing risky strategies in order to get such a high score. Yes, that's one of the reasons why it probably wasn't Billy Mitchell that did it. But to blatantly do things that are against the rules and know in your heart that you didn't do it correctly and get credit for it. We know what kind of, is there any satisfaction in that? I don't see, I don't see any. That's as far as Steve Weeby will go to call out bullshit. I feel like, I mean, he has more to prove anyways that's, like, better than, like, what's cheated. So maybe that's that's his driving force. Maybe that's why he doesn't care enough. I don't know. Work is for people who can't play video games. Billy Mitchell. That's right. Why do you have his hot sauce? <laughs> I never knew it was so important. The Guinness, a lot of people are... Yeah, people, a lot of people read that book. Some people sort of ruin their lives to be in there. <laughs> it's interesting that she would say that because her reference, her, what do you call it? Her, like, her data pool is one person. <laughs> So that's so obviously she thinks that he's ruining his life. I, otherwise she wouldn't yeah. know about anyone else, right? That you could buy a weightlifting glove which was fingerless, and I used it to uh, used it to play Marble Madness. See the double padding? Occasionally I use this to avoid calluses <laughs> from jo certain joints. You can admire games. the double padding and, and the, uh, yeah, all day long. the stitching. Have Ooh, you played many of these great. old school games? I, I usually just set at the Galaga machine. I do I do attempt like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, although I'm not very good at it. But I never I, there's no appeal to me for the for the very old games. Mm -hmm. But I am completely ignorant. But just on the surface, they don't seem very appealing. I, I told him last night that he had to come, that there was no reason for him not to be here. He says I have 15 reasons why I can't come. I said, they're all BS. This is at 1.30 in the morning. I said, they're all BS, because I have 15 reasons why you have to be here tomorrow. He had a chance to play him in Fun Spot this year. He had a chance to play him in Pompano Beach. He had a chance to play him at, Cla at California Extreme. That's three of them I can think of right there. Why wouldn't he play against Steve? Because he's afraid he's going to lose. Does Billy never think that, yeah, that, would, that people would have that impression of him? Like, that people would see that he's like avoiding him. I thought he's all about his image and yet he's just purposely making himself look bad here. And he did make himself look bad. Everyone who watches this documentary c came off it hating Billy Mitchell. I mean, Billy Billy still plays. Like he still streams on Twitch and everything like that. So like, has he he has, has he gotten a million legit? It took him ages to get a million. And he, he was playing more than most. So he, his excuse for not being at the top isn't like lack of playing. He's just not that good compared to the top players. And uh, he was never as good as 
these scores that he did back then until very recently. With speedrunning is, is a great example. In 2004, the world record for beating the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was like four hours, four to four, between four and six hours. Yeah, I mean, it was like the first one was like six. Now it's like seven minutes. If you were to play Zelda now and get six hours, that's nothing. So if you compare the scores from back then, which, you know, his claimed world records of a million 47 is much, much, much stronger than getting a million 47 now. It's like, like yeah. night and day difference. Like the strategies are, the strategies these days are way better. If anybody were to have access to the best tools, to the best strategies, it would be the dude with the most resources, which should be, I mean, it should be Billy Mitchell if he's kept up with it since the 80s. Yeah. But obviously people who say, you know, well, um, he's got a million points again, so he's a good player. They are just generally ignorant of what good is these days, mm -hmm. because what is good in Donkey Kong these days is much better than what was good 15 years mm -hmm. ago. It's a huge difference. When you, when you get to watch the good players and you get to see all these great games of such high scores, you have such an advantage over people 15 years ago. It's such a big deal. Comparing uh, a million points 20 years ago or 15 years ago to now, it's not even close. And so he was never as good as he was claiming, never as good. And, and the fact that he got the scores now says nothing about back then at all. Yeah. Billy. This is so awkward. There's certain people I don't want to spend too, too much time with. See, I, I really think that he thinks this paints him in a good light. Man, this documentary really, really paints him as an asshole, huh? If only he just didn't say things that an asshole says, we wouldn't think that. Maybe he thought that the, the documentary was going to paint him in a great light and Steve Weeby was the antagonist. <laughs> and that he was like, if Steve Weeby's the antagonist... <laughs> There's no way. Possible, There's no way he was trying to 5D chess this. There's no... Do you think that wholesome ass Steve Weeby is the is the antagonist? Greatest ever. And, and so he's afraid to, that if he loses, that's going to tarnish him yeah it's totally that mentality of you you can't lose if you don't play you can't lose if you don't compete and it's really weird um i i kind of see this a bit in speedrunning as well billy mitchell obviously cares about his image but it completely lacks understanding of how humans work you know if you look about the like the priority or the hierarchy of human values winning in a winning in a video game is very low yeah. What humans really care about is how, if you're a nice person, if you're friendly, you know, if you're all that kind of stuff, like that's far more valuable to them. So by saying I'm going to come across as a jerk because I want to preserve my image as a good gamer, it, it just lacks that fundamental understanding about what, what we, what humans really want to see in people. And I see like in speed running, a lot of people think that they have to be the best speed runner to, to be big on Twitch. And I've even had people like upset at me for getting a lot of viewers because they, they don't think that I am as good as them. And they get very resentful, like, oh, I'm a better player, so I should have more viewers. And I, I've seen that as well. If you're not a very good player and you have a lot of viewers, then your viewers are stupid because they should be watching someone who's a better player. But at the end of the day, people just want to see a nice, friendly person who makes them feel good. Yeah. And uh, if, if Billy really cared about his image, he should be wanting to be friendly at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, he forcefully like made himself enemies with Steve for no good reason. He didn't do anything to him. I don't. I just don't understand it. It could could have been this echo chamber thing where he was getting a lot of a lot of attention in his little group because he was a good player, and then he sort of just extrapolated that to the broader public and thought that maybe that's what they really care about. Especially people who aren't gamers don't care about how good you are as a gamer you know they just want to be entertained and mm -hmm. hang out with a friendly person at the end of the day so you're doing the cut next to start the yeah i'm gonna break so this yeah. will be your last start last start okay it, it just sucks man because okay. imagine if walter day had his nice friendly persona and wasn't a con man it's just such a huge shame you know i mean i've seen more of walter outside of even this documentary and you know, still just footage, but... And his demeanor is always nice. Yeah. There's been a couple of things, like, that were really 
questionable behavior though the when Dwayne Richard was showing his uh, the King of Con at one of these big events, and mm -hmm. uh, Walter Day was there, and then Walter Day afterwards got up and was like in front of everyone and started reading this personal email that uh, Dwayne Richard had sent to Day, and it was just a really scummy thing. But his demeanor was like friendly, so his demeanor is always friendly. Yeah, but a lot of a lot of their decision making is very questionable. He is a decent person at heart. In the end, that's all that matters. Aww. See, everyone else knew that it was corrupt. Everyone, everyone knew it was corrupt, and she's literally saying Steve isn't corrupt, and she's implying that they, that everyone in uh, Twin Galaxies mm -hmm. was like, everyone around there at the time knew knew what it was like. I know it's appeal to emotion, but like, she is a bit like fed up with like the like video game stuff, like it pretty much in any frame the interviewer with. About, and then she talks about video games. She really could not care less. But, like, it does seem like the fact that Steve is such a nice guy is, you know, kind of what carries it, I guess. You can imagine her life. Steve Weeby, her husband's, like, excited, got a new world record. And all she hears is, oh, I got a new world record. And then later, oh, my world record got disqualified. <laughs> and then later on, he's like, oh, yeah, I got a new world record. And then later, oh, I got disqualified. Like, yeah. that's all she's hearing over and over and over again. Steve Weeb, could you come up here? Todd Rogers. I mean, he's proven himself not just as a Donkey Kong player, but really as a person of, so of somebody who really desires to do the right thing. You agree with? I mean, it's, I'm not familiar enough with the situation. Okay. Well, yeah, this to me, this section I I is I it just. I confirms that the the director or whatever hated Billy Mitchell because the way that was edited. Just makes him look so bad, and I don't know if if the the guy behind the camera was actually asking about what Steve just said. You don't know if how it was cut, but um, the way the way that that looks really really bad. Hog. Such a feel-good end, eh? I remember feeling great when I first watched this. My closing statement, I just want to say about this whole thing. The reason I, I am into it is because I find it so fascinating. Just everything about this situation is just crazy. It's so outlandish. It's so interesting. I love learning about it and I, I, I just find it so interesting. So that's why I talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't get the impression that I... Uh, I'm just hating on Billy Mitchell. Or I'm just hating on on anyone. Mm -hmm. I just love learning about this story because it's just so fascinating. So I think you did a, a really great job of explaining everything. It was really nice having you on and nice having you guys all here to watch with us. All right, guys, that's all we're going to keep you for. Peace out, guys.